Hey, hey, Sammy Do coming to you live from Precious World Office Studios. Real estate mentor and coach and investor, founder of the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. I want to talk to you today about prerequis prerequisites that are necessary uh, in order to be in the real estate investing business. If you uh, ever thought about getting into the real estate investing business or if you are in the business and still trying to get your first or second deal, uh, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel because we come to you from a grassroots standpoint, giving you the golden nuggets, the secret sauce that you're not getting anywhere else. And I want to talk to you about the two prerequisites uh, to be in this business. Sammy Stu, live from Precious World Studios, doing it again, dropping another golden nugget. isn't for everybody not everybody's cut out for this business so without these two requisites if you can't acquire these prerequisites this could be a money pit for you so this is why I want to give you the raw grassroots truth about how uh, what you would need in order to be successful in this business okay uh, so we're talking about the two prerequisites you need uh, before you can actually get into this real estate investing business in the wholesaling business and I've already shared one uh, we talked about the first one is a level of education there's a separate video that you can check out on that uh, but and, you know, but what we also said was the best way and the quickest way to get that level of education and, and, and actually the most inexpensive way the cheapest way to get that level of education is to acquire a mentor and uh, so that would kind of help you and that will save you a lot of money in the long run but just kind of getting a mentor and having them hold your hand through it all uh, will, will really help you and that's that is a service that we provide here at the real estate wholesale helpline also the second prerequisite is a set of skill sets you, you need to have a set of skills a set of various skill sets and in this particular video because uh, when I say a set of skill sets there are multiple skill sets that you need uh, but in this particular video I want to talk about the negotiating skill set how to uh, improve on your negotiating skill set how do you develop that negotiating skill set and I want to be very very careful here uh, because I'm only talking about on the surface you know the, the skill set of negotiating and what you need to do to have that skill set what I'm not going to teach in this video is how to negotiate because those are two different, uh, um, two different spaces in the negotiation piece. I'm going to tell you, negotiation is one of the most comprehensive skill sets in this business. Uh, you'll find everything that you do as a negotiation, whether it's in words or actions, um, everything is being evaluated in, nego as in the negotiation of that relationship. So. This is a very, very important skill set. Not everyone uh, is good at it, or not everyone takes the time to learn how to do it. Uh, and not everyone is that successful in it. Uh, so the, the better that you are at negotiating, uh, the more successes that you can have. Uh, and so I want to kind of cover, give you, I'm going to give you seven points on how you can improve uh, your negotiating skill sets and again keep in mind that's different than the negotiation science altogether and I'll, I'll be frank though that particular course and class is reserved for my my paid students <laughs> all right so um, I want to just but I do want to help you with how do you improve uh, your negotiating skill set so first 
bullet point. The first point I want to make sure that you get is before you do anything with negotiating, do your homework first. Do your homework on uh, whatever you're negotiating. And that's, we're in real estate. We're in real estate wholesaling. And do your homework on the property. Know your numbers. What is the ARV? What are the necessary repairs? What does she have a mortgage? Does she, he or she have a mortgage? Or, or, or what are those numbers? Uh, what 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 is the CAD system showing? The county CAD. If if if, if this is a foreclosure, how far behind are they in their payments? What is the reinstatement? If if it's uh, went as far as to the trustee to to be foreclosed on, what is that reinstatement amount? Know your numbers. What uh, what are the costs in that particular area? Uh, the cost to repair properties in one area could be different than the cost of the repair properties in a different area, even though you're in the same city. Um, but you really want to do your homework. And I'll be frank, any time uh, that I deal with a lead and a prospect, I'm, I'm looking for two to three uh, different sets of numbers uh, that, that I would be comfortable with on the acquisition standpoint that will help aid in two or three different types of strategies from an exit standpoint. I typically want to make sure I, I can identify two to three different type of exit strategies depending on the acquisition of the property. So that's all about the numbers, folks. Um, and of course, uh, we, you know, that means you, you probably should have had looked at the property as well, get an idea of what kind of work needs to be done, if any. Uh, if it's going to be a full, full rehab, light rehab, medium type of thing, what, what areas need to be touched, depending on what the exit strategies would be. So do your homework. Do your homework first. Uh, typically, before I even begin getting into numbers with the seller, I'm getting information from them. Uh, I, I did a video talking about the listening skill set. Uh, this is where that skill set really comes into play because you hopefully have listened to a lot of things that the seller had already talked about, had already shared with you uh, from a numeric standpoint, uh, the condition standpoint, all that kind of stuff. So all of that is kind of goes into this this bullet point. Now, know, know your numbers and uh, do your homework and listening to what they have got to say as well and just putting that all together and let that, let that tell you what the story is. So that's Point number one and negotiating again is very comprehensive um, you know there's there are some sharks out there there are some folks that are not I always want to make sure that uh, uh, I definitely show a level of respect for the other party in a sense that um, I want to give them you know their opportunity to, to present their case if necessary as well but uh, you know, doing your homework and all that is, is important. And again, I'm trying not to cross over into the actual skill of, of, of the negotiating science. Point number two is, and I kind of said this already, know what you want to get. Know where you want to be. Uh, I would also say don't show your hand. This is not something you go tell them what you want. Uh, that's part, That's this is, you know, you, I never really go and introduce and you know my my full hand on the front side of anything. Uh, you you kind of want to work your way there uh, at some point. So, but you in your mind as a negotiator, you want to kind of know what is it that's a, that's going to be a win for you, right? What's going to work for you? What's going to allow you to to do what you feel like you can do uh, to help them out? And again, you don't want to show your hand, uh, so you kind of want to, uh, <clears throat> uh, but you do definitely want to have that in mind. Um, number three, the three of the seven points, you want to empathize on their side. You want to kind of put yourself on their side of the coin. And, and imagine if you were to approach, if, if you were to approach them, Imagine if you were in their place and you were being approached by you, how would you want to respond, right? 
And that can either be a good response or bad response. But if you imagine from their side of the uh, coin as to how you're approaching them, that's going to better allow you to understand what would be the best way to approach in this in this case. Empathize with them. You under, want to understand, hopefully, what what they want out of the situation. What's the most important thing that's important for them? Sometimes it's not always about the numbers. Uh, sometimes there could be something else. It could be, uh, I don't want to be put out on the street right away. It could be, uh, I don't want to have to fix all this stuff before I sell it to you. It could be so many different things that didn't really necessarily come out in some way or form, at least out in their mind. And so you want to empathize uh, with them to better understand their side and what they would want out of the situation and working with you and speaking with you and in the negotiations and number four with that in mind you know your numbers you you kind of know where you want to be and you understand where they are so now number number four i'm sorry did i say number five number four <laughs> we got got notes here so i can kind of stay track number four is aim for the win-win scenario with them where it's a win in your mind for you and you're not necessarily telling them it's a win for you just letting them know that this would be good but mostly where it's a win for them it's a win for them and you're good with that right uh, that's a little go nugget with what I would say in my paid course a little bit but you want to aim for the win-win when you're negotiating you understand where you are you, you empathize with where they are so you want to try to find a thing, what's going to work the best? And I'm always going to have two or three different scenarios that I can present to them to see if they, that's what they would like. And uh, number five, uh, I would say is this is, you know, negotiations can be tough. Uh, it just depends on who you're talking to, who's got the higher motivation level, uh, what's all involved uh, from a convenience standpoint, inconvenience standpoint, who's getting the, 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 the win that they want. It, it could be very, very tough. And sometimes you, you don't have the luxury of sugarcoating things. So number five would be be direct. Um, you can be direct politely though, uh, but you can be direct. Uh, sometimes you have folks trying to play games with you. You know, trying to trick you up and, you know, they start introducing lies and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, you want to be direct still. I, I don't let anybody try to manipulate me into a situation. Um, and and that you can still negotiate without losing your ethics. You can still negotiate without losing your ethics. I mean, don't get me wrong. Not showing your full hand and your open thing, your whole end goal. Not showing that, that's not a crime and it's not unethical. That's just business. Now, but if you're lying about things, that's a problem. That's a problem. So you don't want to be lying about situations and telling stories and things of that nature. But but not telling everything and showing your full hand, that's different. That's just business because you, you, you represent your interests. Right. You re represent your interests and it'll be up to them to represent their interests. And, you know, those that are the better negotiators understand how to make a win for, for both parties. But sometimes it requires you to be direct. Uh, where you're going to let them know, hey, listen, we can talk, but let's make sure we're staying, you know, fair and reasonable and, you know, not making stuff up. And it's just, you know, I'm, we don't have to agree on everything. But as long as we know where we don't agree, we know where we still have to talk a little bit more to see where we can come to an agreement. So, so something like that. So just understand being direct is important and, and not and, and, and being clear and concise in certain situations is important. That's number five. Number six, always be cool about it, though. You don't have to be all emotionally entrenched in a situation. You don't have to be dropping all those four letter words and getting all upset and calling names and belittling and you know all that kind of thing that's not necessary just just be cool and sometimes uh uh uh, uh, uh what, what they say a, a slow uh 
a slow no is better than a fast yes type of thing or however they say that uh, it de I guess it depends on what you want. If, if you want to know, then that's what you want. If you want the yes, that's what you want. But just being cool about it is okay. Sometimes you don't have to get the answer right away. Uh, sometimes it, 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 it can saturate with them, let them think about it for a minute, and they can come back and say, yeah, you know, this could work. All right? Uh, but no sense in being emotional about it. This is just business, and, you know, if it doesn't work here, we can go somewhere else. And with that being in mind, Number seven is, you guys got to know when to go ahead and walk. Not not all negotiations you're going to win. Sometimes I, I, sometimes I, I run into folks and they're so emotionally entrenched in that bad situation, um, which is the root cause of why we're not able to win. And sometimes folks just kind of get stuck in stupid, what I, what I say to myself. Uh, they just be stuck in stupid. I don't call them that. I don't say that to them. But, you know, when you're not... When you're expecting some type of result that you're not getting and you're still doing the same things over and over and over and over, it's like, okay, why? You know, there's something that you're not being reasonable about or whatever, and I'm explaining it to you. But, hey, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You just know when to walk. So do your homework. Know where you need to be. Empathize with them. Aim for the win-win. Be direct. Stay cool with it. And know when to walk. Those are seven points that you can practice to improve your negotiating skill sets. Um, again, that's not the actual science of negotiating, but it is, they are the skill sets that you need to practice on the science of it. And really, if you are really interesting, interested in learning better how to negotiate and you're interested in wanting to become uh, one of my students, feel free to click the link in the description. It's called the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. Uh, that allows you to get onto my calendar where we can actually have a video conference and you can speak to me in person about your business. And uh, we can also talk about what I would require if we were to get a longer term relationship of me mentoring and teaching you the things that I know uh, after having done uh, a number of these types of transactions. So if you like this video, please uh, like it and share it. Make a comment, if you will, if you appreciate. Uh, if you don't like it, let me know that as well. I just I, I definitely be interested in the activity and I want to uh, be able to do things better for you or continue to do what I'm doing to help you get to your first or second deal. It's our, our goal here at the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline, my goal to help you get your first deal in 30 to 60 days if you hadn't done that, making anywhere from three to $30,000. Uh, and if you hadn't done that, this is uh, getting a mentor is the quickest way to success. So uh, again, check out the link, get on my calendar if you wanna do that and subscribe to this channel. And until then, I'll see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. How you like my power red for negotiating? <laughs> hey, hey, Sammy, do do rude back at you. Hey, uh, are you smelling what I'm cooking? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? You like these golden nuggets that we are dropping at you? Well, if you do, please like the video that you just seen. Also, subscribe to this platform. You can do that by hitting the red uh, subscribe now button somewhere here or there. Uh, look for it, hit the subscribe button. Uh, that would encourage me to continue to put out uh, more content like this and uh, check out my library of other videos as well. Also, don't forget, if you need to set your appointment, the link is in the description, Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. And until then, I will see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. God bless Sammy. Doom, doom.